Hi, Karen. Hi, David. How are you doing today? <laughs> oh, I'm having a great day. Thank you. My Good. dad used to say, every day is a great day, just some are better than others. I so like I'm, I'm very fortunate to have a very good perspective on life and feel very blessed. Yeah. So my name is David Cope, and I'm the, one of the founders of a new life center. And I got involved in relationships when I got divorced in the year 2000. And I wanted to find a way to have a loving and intimate relationship is one of the most important things in my life. I didn't want to uh, be on my deathbed and wish that I missed out on a loving and intimate relationship. So I sp I've been spending the last 15 years trying to understand uh, relationships and marriage and realized that the key factor in having a loving and intimate relationship is begins with me. And that from that perspective, I was able to look inside myself and see the things that I needed to change and look at myself that caused me to create the experiences that I had in my life. So today we're going to talk about something that profoundly changed my outlook in relationships. Um, and what I realized is that I'm the common denominator in all of my life's experiences. So I'm going to say that again. I am the common denominator in all of my life's experiences. When I started to realize that, it was it was a profound shift in fundamentally being a victim and blaming others for why my life turned out the way it was into allowing me to be my life to be a product of my choices and knowing that I can create the life that I dream about and have a loving and intimate relationship if I change myself because if I'm the common denominator in all of my life's experiences, then that gives me, that empowers me to change and make, some, make a difference in my life and moving forward because I'm no longer a victim to past experiences that somehow somebody had done something or caused me to have an experience. So today, Karen, we're going to talk about the common denominator and how that is uh, um, affects all of our relationship, especially in the marriage that you have today. Uh, so the, the title of our program is Why You Are Failing in Your Marriage. So you are failing in your marriage because you are the common denominator and all of your experiences you've had in your relationships with men. Karen, would you introduce yourself a little bit and t and kind of talk a little bit about the common denominator? Absolutely. Uh, I'm Karen Seitz, and I'm the lead teacher for the relationship course at A New Life Center. And I've been involved with The New Life Center in training in these processes and educational programs for almost four years which means I've also been applying these concepts and working on myself in my marriage for almost four years. And the common being, seeing myself as the common denominator and even recognizing that I was failing in my marriage was imperative for me to start making steps forward and stop going around in circles and trying to work on things in my marriage that I couldn't fix because the thing I was trying to work on in my marriage was my husband and I can't fix or change my husband. So for me, common denominator is looking at how I'm the common thread or I, I'm the constant in my marriage. I'm the constant in my past relationships. And so if things aren't working, I have to look at myself because I'm the only person that I can change. And that's what the common denominator allows us to do in a really empowering way. Um, it can be really daunting to recognize that I'm the common denominator and that constant in my marriage or in all of my relationships. But that's a good thing because I can do something about my experience. I do have that power to change myself. So once I can get through that overwhelming feeling, it actually makes things so much simpler and, and a, a lot easier to move through. Thank you, Karen. You mentioned one of the foundational principles of our relationship course at a new life center that's been evolving over the last 15 years 
is that w the only person that you can change is yourself. And, that, and, and that's very empowering. The other, the other fundamental concept that we work with in our relationships in a, at a new life center and part of the, the authentic intimacy group is that you are responsible for your own happiness. Uh, expecting your husband to make you happy is something that is not possible. So what we learn here in a new life center in our relationship class is how to learn how to make yourself happy so you're no longer looking to your husband to be the source of your happiness. And, and the third one is that intimacy really is and begins with a relationship with yourself. So if you feel like you're in a marriage that lacks intimacy and connection and you feel like your husband is distant and you become roommates, the, the way to begin to break that problem down is to realize that intimacy begins with yourself. And building a relationship with yourself causes you to find intimacy within yourself and no longer look outside of yourself to your husband to create that intimacy within yourself. So understanding you're the common denominator of all of your relationship is actually a step towards building intimacy with yourself. Because intimacy really is a willingness to see how I am the source of my own unhappiness. And, and it's, it's very empowering to see your past relationships. You're the common denominator. So Karen, I thought it would be fun today to kind of do a little, oh, it's kind of fun to look at ourselves as common denominator. <laughs> but, but, but we do, when we start looking at ourselves, at first it seems scary because we've suppressed all these things about ourselves we don't know. And what the mind does is it projects on the people around us as the source of our unhappiness and internal unhappiness and it's very scary at first to, to lift up the carpet and look under, underneath to see the things that we don't want to know about ourselves but what you actually find it, it if you have a sense of curiosity that it actually becomes kind of like a detective and trying to find the issues that you know have been plaguing you in your relationships and throughout all aspects of your life so if, if, if our listeners want to go along with us, we're going to do a little exercise about the common denominator. Are you, are you ready for this, Karen? I am. And I just want to piggyback off what you were saying, David, that it really does become, I think the rewards are so great when we're willing to look at ourselves in that depth and see the things we don't want to see, how I feel about myself after doing that and letting that weight go because I've mm -hmm. been spending so much energy trying to suppress that and ignore those icky things about myself. Once I see it, I get to let it go. And then I feel so good about myself. So the benefits far outweigh the discomfort of seeing the hard things about ourselves and taking a, a good look in the mirror. Okay. Thank you, Karen. So how many, romantic relationships have you had over the course of your uh, adult life, Karen? Five. Five? I've had okay. five, including so my like, husband. Okay, so I'd like you to draw five lines okay. across the middle of your paper. So it kind of looks like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want you to put the names of each of your partners underneath each line. So what were their partners' names? We've got Wes. Wes. Zach. Zach. George. George. Tony. Tony. And Adam. Adam. And Adam is your husband right now. He's yes, getting he the is. benefit of all of this work. He is. <laughs> I can see you smiling. <laughs> that's good. Part of that's my nerve. Like, where is this going? <laughs> hey, we'll find out. We never know. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so we now the sheet looks like something like this, and on top of, so what did you blame Wes for in your relationship and how he made you feel? It's not getting enough attention. Not enough intention so on top of the line right 
not enough attention. So again, it's going to look. Let's see, you can see this. Mm -hmm. And then, what? What about Zach? What do you remember mm -hmm. was you blamed him for for why you broke up and how he made you feel? It's not attractive enough. Not attractive. Good. And George. Just always feeling second place. Oh. Feeling second place. Mm -hmm. Good. And Tony? There is no ambition or nothing was going anywhere. Okay. Um, yeah. A dead end. A dead felt end. Like dead Always end. felt like a dead end. A dead end. And how about your husband, Adam? Oh, well, he's perfect. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that happy pill. You no, no issues there. Um, whew, and this is what it's like to then go there. Um, I would say, again, just not a priority, feeling ignored. Feeling ignored. Okay, good. Yeah. Feeling ignored. Okay. So, again, we have our piece of paper. It looks like this. Yeah. And one of the cool things... For our listeners is is that you probably have felt the same way with the men in your romantic relationships which means is that our problems that we experience in relationships are normal and we all experience something very similar that's what we found over these years of doing the research is that that we all experience the same types of emotions and feelings and that they're not unique. And sometimes we think, oh, I'm the only one that feels this way. And we look around the world you know, around us and we see the happy couples and they're snuggling together and they look like they're having these loving and intimate relationships. And we feel like we're the only one that didn't get the manual and somehow we're the ones that are lo losing out in life. But the cool thing is when you do this work, enough with enough people you realize we all share the same similar issues and the cool th and the good thing is that what because we do that they can be resolved because if we think we're the only one and our problems are unique and we're we're really kind of in trouble yeah. yeah 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 so karen what what i want you to do in understanding the common denominator is realize is that that you are the common denominator to all these relationships. So I'm just going to cross out Wes and put Karen. And I'm going to cross out Zach and put Karen. I'm going to cross out George and put Karen. I'm going to cross out Tony and put Karen. And I'm going to put cross out Adam and put Karen. So what we begin to see when we change this is that Karen is the one that has these feelings about herself and each one of these a relationship and the men in the relationship would just context for Karen to realize that these are issues within herself, that the men are, are not the source of the issues. They just bring out these issues within yourself. And that's the power of the common denominator. So, so what, what did you, re when you do this, Karen, what do you begin to understand in this exercise? Well, one is that all the things I felt in each relationship, those were a common theme in every single relationship. Oh, oh, so yeah. not enough attention, not attractive, feeling second place, feeling, uh, felt like a dead end, feeling ignored. Those came up and every single relationship they weren't unique to those individual men that i was with and what i also begin to see in this is you know when when i blame wes or george or tony or zach or adam for how i'm feeling about myself and those experiences i become trapped in that and there's nothing i can do to change it because i want then to somehow change it, which of course is impossible. I can't go back in time and there's nothing they can do. There's nothing anyone can do 
to change these experiences of myself. So by work. Why is that? It, it, it seems counterintuitive. If we can, it, you would think if I can get my husband to change and if he's just a little more romantic and pays a little bit more attention to me and gives oh. me a, and listens to me and, and kind of has my back and why, if he had all of those things and was doing those, I wouldn't feel the, the way I feel. It's, it's what the mind wants to tell us. What's the, why, what's the fallacy of that? Why is that an erroneous assumption? Yeah, well, it, it's fascinating because my husband has tried to do the things to make uh -huh. me not feel these ways. And what's been really interesting to me is, you know, one of my big complaints is I don't get enough attention. I don't get enough um, affection. And then when he starts to give me those things, it's so interesting because my walls go up and then I'm I'm angry that he's even trying to do that. And it's like, oh, it's too much. Like, it's too much attention or you're not doing it the way I want you to. Yeah. So it really goes back to that central theme that we're, we're really trying to um, uh, pull through here is that there is nothing anyone or anything can do to make me happy. I could have the most perfect man in the world who did everything right. And yet if this is how I feel in myself, mm -hmm. he cannot change that. Um, it, it's we often use the description it's like we're a cup with holes and it, it will fill me up for a little bit but then i'm needing more and more and more and more and constantly on that hamster wheel and never feeling fulfilled because i have to find these things within myself and you know the quote that i put up the other day that peggy said is so true that nobody can make me feel as good as i can make myself feel and by applying these things and looking at myself and realizing it's not the men that made me feel this way. Then I get to let those things go. And it's true. There is, there's nothing my husband can do for me to make me feel as good as I feel when I do what I need to do for myself. And I'm doing the things to make myself feel happy in my life. It is irreplaceable. And thank you, Karen. And that's kind of a good reminder about what intimacy, authentic intimacy is about is not looking to, to my husband to fill me up because as long as I, like you said, I have holes, meaning I can't fill myself up because I have all these holes in me. And when I ask my husband to do it, it, it doesn't work because it just goes through the holes. So authentic intimacy really is, is plugging those holes, mm -hmm. learning how to do that, and then filling your cup for yourself so you know no longer looking to your husband or people outside of you to give you that which you weren't able to give to yourself uh, because you had so many holes. And then you begin to be build a foundation of what true intimacy is, is that you have a relationship with yourself and you're filling yourself and not depending on somebody else to do that for you. And what's, what's also really neat and I had a client this morning experiencing this is when I start to do those things for myself and I feel good about myself and yeah. I'm taking responsibility for my happiness, I start to recognize all the things my husband is doing to care yeah. for me and show me affection. And it's me that's changed. And now I can, I can recognize those things. And so I had a client in this morning who said she's working on her marriage and she she said everything's different and it's going well and i think i want to stay and keep working if he's he's responding so differently to me like he's changed and i reminded her i said you're the one she's doing the work he's he she's taking the program and i said you're the one that's changing and so your experience of him is changing but he's always been there you just haven't been able to see him and mm -hmm. she was so excited about that and it you have to experience it to really know it, but that's exactly how this works. Thank you, Karen. So yeah. can you share a little bit about what you would teach somebody about the common denominator and using this little uh, example and one of the problems and how we can yeah. simplify this and how this becomes a, a solvable problem? Sure. So when we look at, again, when we look at how we're feeling about ourselves and we want to put the blame outside of us onto our 
past relationships and the men we've been with or our husband or our partner, then that becomes an unsolvable problem because I can't change them and they cannot change me. So I become stuck and I go around in circles and what tends to happen when I look at my relationship problems that way is I become really overwhelmed. I feel hopeless. I feel helpless. I feel really angry. Um, and I'm constantly trying to get these things outside of me to change and tr constantly trying to control my external world. And I can't. So I end up typically feeling my problems feel so much bigger than they actually are. And they are unsolvable. So what I teach is when we look at, nope, okay, I'm the common denominator in all of these experiences. And in fact, I have felt this way in every single relationship. Then it becomes clear to me that I am the common denominator in that and that I play a role and I play a part. And my role and my part is the only thing that I have any control over. So then I can simplify this down and the problem becomes solvable because I can work on myself. I can change me. And that makes it, makes it solvable. So then instead of feeling overwhelmed and angry all the time and out of control, I, everything actually feels simplified and manageable because the only person I have to work on is me. And all those experiences start to change. And it doesn't happen intellectually. It happens at a deep level of having that willingness to look at myself and be vulnerable and be honest and see the things I have not wanted to see or even admit about myself and then normalizing that, that we all have those experiences. And then that allows me to start to work on them and solve on them or solve them. And how we simplify it down even more is just looking at, okay, these are all relationships and I'm the common denominator in my relationships. So when I work on myself, my relationships change. It's kind of like magic, but not because you have to work hard on yourself. Um, it doesn't have to be hard, but it is hard work because it's not fun. Um, it's not fun to look at those things we don't want to see. But then after a while, once you get used to it and you, you experience the reward and benefit of doing that, um, then it does become easier. And it, it does, like David said, it becomes kind of like you're a detective. Like, okay, I wonder what else is here that I need to discover in myself. So. Thank you, Karen. Of course. So um, I had an interesting experience with a, a woman client that I worked with once, and she was really frustrated with this concept of common denominator and kind of said, well, you know, I don't want to think that I'm the, I'm the problem. Like, well, what about my husband? And well, what about the men and all the issues they had? Why, you know, I don't want that this, responsibility that you know i'm i'm uh the, the problem in all of this and after a while it kind of stuck in and and after a couple more weeks of understanding this concept she came in one day and said you know i finally get it mm -hmm. and she said i liked it now i can be i used to want to be in control of my husband and make sure he's doing what he's supposed to be doing and do it it's always controlling him it never worked now I actually get to still be in control, but I get to be in control of myself. And she said, I finally get it. It isn't about him and changing him. It's now I can be, I can still be in control in my relationship, but now I actually have control of my relationship because when I change myself, everything else around me changes. And she finally got it. She was a, a little bit stubborn at first, but that's perfectly fine. And that's how she grasped it. Like, no, I can be in control of having a happy marriage now. Yeah. She really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's true. So Karen, can you kind of give a, a, an overview of the common denominator and why it's so important in, in realizing why um, our listeners' marriages are failing? Absolutely. What we've been talking about is how to see that you're the constant in your issues and challenges in your marriage and that you're also the constant in all of your experiences of your past relationships and current relationships. And even though that can seem daunting and overwhelming to realize and to see that you are the problem, that's actually a huge step forward and starting to turn your marriage around 
and start working on yourself to see how you're showing up and and what you're bringing into the relationship that's causing you to have the issues and challenges that you're having. And when you start to do that, then you can start to change and your experience of a whole relationship begins to change and the experience of your husband begins to change. And what's even a deeper thing to realize with the common denominator is all the things I listed about how I felt to myself or felt about myself that showed up in every relationship, my husband can feel those things in me. So if I'm feeling desperate for attention or uh, affection, he feels that in me. He might not be aware of that or conscious of that. And he responds and reacts to that in myself. So when I let that go and I start giving myself the attention and affection that I need, yeah. that that frees things up. And then my husband starts interacting and responding to me differently. It's really cool. And that's how impactful this is that people respond to what's going on inside of us, not what we're pretending to be on the outside. Mm, so I never know how my, my husband or partner is going to show up differently when I change what's going on in me. So if I, if I look outside of myself and to, to blame for all the issues and problems that I'm having, that I'm going to get really stuck and really frustrated and really spiral my relationship down the drain. When I start to recognize I'm that constant or common denominator in my issues in my marriage, then that's what allows me to start to move forward. And it actually simplifies things and it feels easier and I feel empowered because all I have to do is work on myself. I don't have to drag my husband into counseling. I don't have to make him do all these things. All I have to do is work on myself and things start to change. And that's what we're talking about today. And that's the kind of thing you said that's kind of like magic. That When you realize that you are the common denominator in your relationships and it's when you change yourself in your relationship, the relationship itself changes. Yeah. And and that's what's fascinating. Though, of course, your husband are, has his own issues and and has to do his own work. But the way the formula works is that if I change how I respond in my relationship, the people and my husband will respond differently to how I'm changing. And, and it is yeah. quite magical. It is. And if it doesn't, then... I still need to take responsibility and show up differently. And if things don't change, then that allows me to see the truth of my relationship. Oh. And and maybe I maybe I'm not in the right relationship for me, and that's okay. And yeah, that's going to be a loss. But I can never know the truth of my experience in a relationship or in the, another person until I'm showing up as myself. And for me, and in a reminder. The information we're sharing is in the narrow context of being with a good man. Oh, and, thank you, Karen. And this, we aren't talking about if you're in an abusive relationship. This is for being with a good man. And if you're confused on that, whether you're with a good man or not, or in the right relationship, I would, I would love to talk and help you figure that out because it's really important to know. So, Karen, what do people have do if they want some help? in their marriage uh, and don't wait too long because the problems get worse. What, what, how can they get in touch with you? So you can um, send me a message on Facebook through the Facebook group and private message me and then we will figure out a time to talk. And what David said is really true. We don't work. It's, it's not as effective to start working on our marriage once things are really bad and we're really stuck in the problems and the issues. Um, it's actually really good. Marriage is hard work. So the sooner you can start working on your marriage and get in there, then the more intimacy you're going to create with yourself, the happier you're going to be. And the more you're going to feel like you've got, got a foundation to know how to navigate your marriage yeah. and relationship. We don't just go into a marriage or a relationship knowing how to do that. So we have to learn. So I encourage you if you're struggling in your relationship, even if you are in a really hard spot, then definitely let's start working on that. And if if you just you want to learn to be the best that you can be in your marriage, this is this is the program for you. So. Well, thank you so much, Karen. Yeah. We appreciate everybody joining us on our uh, call today. And I, 
Thanks for your sharing, Karen. It's a wonderful to share all this work with you. And Thank we you. look forward to sharing more information. And have a good day. All right. Bye, Bye David. Thanks.